Hello, um, it's No Limit Eddie back with another video. All right, so we're here on another live stream. Actually, this time around, I know it was just live yesterday. I don't normally go, I don't normally go live on Mondays. However, I'm probably just gonna go live as much as I can this month since I didn't really post so many videos in, in, a, in the beginning of this month. So um yeah we're live again now in today's video today's live stream just going to be talking about the number one secret uh, when it comes to moving to africa now initially i was going to title this video um how to plan your move to africa um you know because i do think this is an important topic to talk about um however you know i decided to name it the number one secret move in africa or, or a secret movement to africa i don't know what i titled it but essentially what we're going to be talking about in today's video is how to move to Africa. All right. Um, and I want to talk about it from my personal experience. You know, everybody has their own way of doing things. I'm just going to talk about my way of doing things because that's the way that I know, because that's the way that I did it. All right. That's the way I've done it. And um, so that's kind of how I'm going to plan on sharing it. Now, at the same time, whoever is on here, I appreciate you for being on here. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor and to smash the like button on today's video. Go ahead and like today's video. It is free to do, and it just helps YouTube to share this video out to more people. So, um, yeah, definitely would greatly appreciate it if you decide to share this live stream out. Uh, I mean, if you decide to like this live stream to help it get shared out to more people. Um, anybody who's on here, drop me a comment and let me know where you're at. Um, maybe you're at work right now. Maybe you're at home right now. Maybe you're at school right now. Who knows? You know, uh, I do, you know, normally check demographics on my channel. Most of you guys are like, you know, um, 25 to 54. That's kind of the biggest, biggest age range, 25 to 54. So I'm assuming right now on a Monday, you probably you got to probably at work, you know, um, sitting in an office and things like that on my way to work. So somebody's on their way to work. Appreciate you. Swerve. Uh, I didn't say say Swerve Media. Shout out to you. Um, you guys know I'm here in Egypt, chilling in my apartment for now. Um, really, it's, it's a little bit late for me. It's 1034. I normally like to go live a little bit earlier than this, but um, I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't um, get get uh, get in the position to do live until around right now. So um, that's why we're going live now. I got a little bit of work done today. Didn't, I didn't really get everything I wanted to do done today, but enough to um you know um i got enough to feel comfortable um with, with today what, what i was able to do today um <laughs> so um yeah let's go ahead and get into this um moving out let me pull up my notes I'm pull up my notes i got it on my phone All right, so how do you plan your move to Africa effectively? What's the process of finding a job in Egypt? Let's say I have a few months rent already saved. You know, Swerve Media, man, I'll be 100% honest with you. I have no idea how you find a job. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I don't even know what the process is of getting a work permit. I don't really know anything about that. Um, I never plan on working another nine to five job um, as long as I live. So um, I don't know how um, to go about it. But I definitely know you can go about it. I know there's a lot of um, Kenyans, there's a lot of Nigerians, um, you know, here that that work. There's a lot of people, African Americans, probably even who come here and do teaching jobs. You know, um, how do you go about finding it? I don't know if it's like a thing you go online and then you know, or you meet somebody, you meet somebody in person, you get hired. I don't know how to, how it all works, for, to be honest. But definitely, you can find a job um, because people offer you jobs all the time. You know. Um, uh, you know, working in animation, which is hotel work. I get offered that quite a bit, um, you know, but every, how everything else works, I don't know. Um, but shout out to everybody on this live. Shout out to everybody on this live, man. Everybody come in here and smash the like button, all right? Let's get up to 10 likes on today's live. Let's get up to 10 likes on today's live. The more you like the video, the more YouTube shares it out. We're going to be talking about how do you plan your move to Africa. This is probably one of my most requested videos, you know. Um, and I don't think people are like actually saying, hey, how do you plan to move? However, 
the general sense is people would like to know how to go about moving um, and making it efficient and effective for them. All right. So um, one of the first things that really comes what it comes down to in making your move um, is your plan. You know, everybody says you need to have a plan, you need to have a plan. And so today I'm going to talk about how I went about planning everything um, when I moved to Tanzania. Likewise, when I moved here to Egypt. So um, everybody smash the like button for me. Let's get up to 10 likes on today's live, guys. 10 likes on today's live. All right. First thing is research. Okay, the first part of making your plan to move into Africa is you need to do a little bit of research. Now, what type of research do you need to do in particular, right? Um, the first thing you need to research is a country of choice. What country you plan on moving to? There is 53 countries in a, on a continent of Africa, 54 countries on the continent of Africa, you know, depending on, you know, I don't know, 53, 54. So basically, with that being said, you know, um, you need to figure out which of the 54 countries, which of the 53 countries you want to move to. You know, um, everybody come in here and smash like, everybody come here and smash like, get up to 10 likes, got 10 likes. So you're going to have to figure out what, which of the countries you plan on moving to. Now, when you're researching a country, you know, there's a couple of things that I look for <clears throat> that, you know, um, will let me know if I want to go to that country or not. You know, uh, one of those things is visa. Another one of those things is language. And then the third one of those things is the cost of living. So making your plan of moving to Africa, first thing you need to figure out is, first thing you need to do is research, okay? That's kind of the core basis of everything. You need to figure out which country you want to go to. Now, there's so many countries, you're going to ask yourself, well, which country should I choose out of all these countries? Everybody smash your like, everybody smash your like, all right? Uh, the first thing I always look at is a visa situation, okay? What is the visa on arrival process? And what is my options for renewing that visa? Now, coming out of America, you don't think about any 10 likes, guys. I need one more of you to smash the like button. If you are watching the video horizontally like this, turn it up, up uh, straight up and down vertically and smash a like. Um, likewise, if you're watching the computer, minimize the window, smash a like. And if you happen to be watching on the TV, you can smash a like on the TV or you can pull out your phone and smash the like button. Also, drop me a chat right now. Let me know where you're at while you're watching this. Are you on your way to work? Are you at work? Are you at school? Where you at? All right. Um, but, you know, basically, that's kind of one of the first things that goes into it is, is the visa, you know, um, of that country. Um you know, what's the visa on arrival process with your current passport? If you have a passport from Canada, you need to understand what's the process of a Canadian getting a visa on arrival or do I have to apply ahead of time? Because you can try to get to a country, you can fly over to a country thinking you can do visa on arrival, but you can't do visa on arrival and they should send you away. And that'll be a sad day for you, wouldn't it? So you want to avoid that um, by doing your research on the visa process. What is the entry visa, right? The entry visa is when you first come into the country at the airport, they're going to give you a stamp or they're going to give you some, something to let you know you, you arrive in the country. And then you have X amount of days after that, um, the X amount of days after that to, um, you know, be in the country before you have to renew it or before you have to leave the country, right? So, you know, Egypt is 30 days. You get 30 days when you come into the country. You need to figure out what you're going to do from there. It's very simple. Uh, Tanzania is, if you're an American passport holder, again, it depends on the country you're from. But if you're an American passport holder, they're going to give you 90 days. So uh, nine days upon arrival. So you got 90 days to figure out what you're going to do. If you want to stay and leave or renew or, you know, so that's kind of how it works in the beginning. What is the visa and arrival process? Don't don't underestimate the importance of visas. All right. We do any research about moving to Africa. Do not underestimate that. So many people are have come in with an American mindset. As Americans, we never worry about immigration, never worry about this, that, legal, legality, of staying here, this, that. You just go about your day-to-day -day life because you're a citizen there and you have certain certain rights, you know what I mean? So you don't really worry about immigration and things like that. However, when you are going to these foreign countries, you cannot carry that mindset with you. You got to take it very serious because these countries take their visa laws and their immigration process very serious as well. So, you know, that's one of the first things you got to worry about is, is visa, okay? Visa on arrival. Now, the next thing you want to be worried about is your visa renewal options. You need to figure out what options do you have to be able to legally renew your visa. Um, you want to know a little bit about that. You want to know about uh, roundabout information about how much it's going to cost you. You know, um, every country is different. Every uh, every country has different um, ways of going about price. You know, there may be one price for this passport holder or maybe one price for this passport holder. So you need to be mindful of, of what it might cost you based off the passport that you hold. Um, everybody go ahead and smash the like button for me, guys. Everybody go ahead and smash the like button. Let's go ahead and get up to 50. 15 likes on this live 15 likes on this live so let's get three more of you guys to smash a like button liking the video this uh, lets youtube know you're enjoying this content and they share it out to more people so 
Um, you know, my my goal as a YouTuber is to get as many people to view my content as possible. You know, um, and for me, or for you guys, you guys want the best content possible. So the more viewers we get, the more ad revenue we get, the more I can invest into um, the content, right? So um, definitely go ahead and smash the like button. 15 likes. So to get four more of you guys to go ahead and smash the like. Now, you know, based off of that understanding of the uh, smash the like, yeah, definitely. You got Shea Vlogs in the building. Um, but with that, with that being said, you know, uh, when it comes to the visa renewal option, you want to know, okay, about how much it's going to cost you to renew your visa, right? Because the cost differs and you want to, you want to have that budget. You want to have that saved aside before you even you know, leave the country and, and things like that. If that's the country you plan on staying in, you know, some people, some people don't want to stay in the country. Some people might just want to be country hop. You know, they may want to come to Egypt and say, okay, you got, I got 30 days of prime arrival. Okay. I'm going to stay for 15 days and I'm going to go to Sudan. They go to Sudan and say, I got X amount of days on arrival. Okay, I'm going to stay there until well, 20, 20 days before I got to leave. Then they go going to hop, hop countries. You can do that. you know. Or, but if you're planning on you know, moving in, into a country and staying in a country, well, then you need to understand your, your renewal options, all right? Uh, but most countries have like student visa options. Hey, I need everybody to go ahead and smash the like button on today's live, all right? I want to get up to 15 likes. So I need three more of you guys to smash the like button on today's video. Three more of you guys to smash the like button onto today's video. Um, today we're talking about, um, you know, how to plan your move to Africa. Uh, I get this question quite a bit, you know, um, just in bits and pieces. People want to know basically how to go about moving to Africa. And so today I'm going to make a comprehensive video telling you guys how to make your plan or how to plan effectively for your move to the continent of Africa. You know, um, if this is your first live stream of mine, I'm currently living in Egypt. I live in Tanzania as well, um, six months uh, out of the year. And I've been in Egypt now for just about six months out of the year. So, you know, um, I'm just going to be telling you guys my experience and, um, you know, my, how, I plan, how I plan when I go and move to different countries, right? Uh, we need one more like to be at 15, guys. So I appreciate you guys for, for our smash on that last like. You get us to 15 likes. Now, um, most countries have like a student visa option, which you can do, which you can pursue. I got scammed doing the student visa. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out on my channel um, in Tanzania. That's main, one of the main reasons why I'm no longer in Tanzania. Um, you know, a lot of countries as well have just the ability to get a renewal or, or like basically an extension. You know, you can get an extension in, in a lot of countries. Um, some countries are for free. Other countries are paid. You know, to get an extension, and some day, sometimes those extensions might be 30 days, 90 days, 15 days, a month. It all depends on the country, you know, that you're in and that you're residing in, you know. Um, so that's something that you need to research is understand your visa renewal options. Because if you plan on staying in the country for uh, an, an, uh, any amount of time, six months, a year, two years, you need to figure out what it's going to take and what's going to cost you to stay for that long. So let's say you live, go to a country where you can get, uh, you can get three renewals. And every renewal is going to cost you 50 bucks. And then every renewal lasts three months. We say, okay, if I want to stay there for a year, I come in, I come in, I spend X amount to come in. Then I get um, three more renewals and that's going to cover me the whole year. So that's three times 50. That's going to be 5, 10, 15. That's going to be basically $150 that I'm going to have to spend on visa renewals. And then plus whatever I spend when I come into the country. So this is why understanding the visa is very important. Um, likewise, you don't want to get caught with your pants down, as they say. You know, you don't want to be in a country illegally, you know, so you need to make sure that you understand your visa laws properly, because if you do stay illegally, you can be arrested. You can be banned from being coming back into that country. You know, you can have issues leaving the country. Um, you can have issues, you know, um, you know, uh, with a lot of things. You can end up paying a fine on a, on a light end. You can end up going to jail. So you need to just understand, you know, the visa laws and make sure that you're following them to the T. All right. Um, that's what I do my best to do is, is understand the laws and, and, and apply and apply them. I need 15 likes, all right? Liking a video just lets YouTube know you're enjoying the content and thus YouTube shares it out to more people. By you being in here, you're you're taking some form of enjoyment from the content. Therefore, I'm asking you to go ahead and smash the like button, all right? I want each and every one of you guys to smash the like button. Um, it's very simple and it's free to do. You know, um, again, I'm sharing my experience being here on the continent and maybe you plan on coming to the continent and you may find value in my experience. Um, and, you know, it's a free way to show support. It's just by hitting the like button. All right. Um, so we're talking about research. All right. How to plan your move to Africa. The first thing you need to do is research. All right. So you first need to figure out the country that you want to move to. 
right? And you can figure out the country you want to move to. Um, and how I figure out countries I want to move to is I first start off with visa. What is it going to cost me to be able to stay in this country? And, and for how long can I stay in this country legally? So that's a visa option. So visa on arrival, be mindful of that. Um, with your passport that you hold, if you hold an American passport, if you hold a Canadian passport, if you hold a Mexican passport, what is your options upon, uh, what are your options with getting a visa on arrival? All right. Um, if you've never left the country before, you some countries will allow you to get a visa on arrival, which means you arrive in the airport and they give you a visa right then and there. All right. There's different levels of visas. There's multi entry visas sometimes. Sometimes they have single entry, dual entry. It's all kind of different things. So you have to do your research on that um, about every country you're looking at moving to. All right. Then you need to understand what are your visa renewal options. Cool. That's that language. I mean, that's that portion. The next thing I research when considering a country is language. All right. Now, when it comes to the language, basically, the reason why language is important is for a few reasons. Um, you want to be able to know that you're going to be able to read the signs within that country, that you're going to be able to communicate effectively within that country. So I normally uh, will look at the, the native language of that country and then also look at if they speak English within that country, like if English is like a secondary language or something of that nature. So um, when I looked at, let's say, Tanzania, I was looking at the language of Swahili and said, OK, let me try to see what this Swahili is about, you know, and I was able to watch a couple of videos and say, OK, this is easy. Like, this is an easy language to learn. I feel like I will have success within learning this language. Thank you guys for smashing a like and getting us up to 19 likes. Clearly, we're one like away from 20 likes. So go ahead and smash the like button, guys. Get up to 20 likes. We want to keep asking for likes, keep getting them up, because, again, this is how we get more eyeballs on the content. Um, you know, um, we need as many eyeballs on the content as possible. So thank you guys for continuously smashing like and helping me to get up to 20 likes on today's live stream. All right. Now, um, you want to be able to know, are you going to be able to learn this language? Is, is, is the language going to be an extreme barrier for you? Now, when it comes to countries where they don't speak your native language already or you don't speak the, 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 the language that is native to that country, basically, you know, you got to understand that you're going to be getting ripped off and you're going to be getting scammed, you know, quite a bit. Um, you're going to hire a translator to, you know, translate things for you. You're going to be paying him the money to translate. And then he's also going to be getting more money out of you because he's going to go. He's going to work with the guy you're supposed to be negotiating with in order to get more, more money from that guy so that he can get himself a cut as well. So you may be trying to buy a um, beanie and you say, yeah, I want to buy this beanie. I want to spend five dollars on it. And then he's going to say he's going to ask you to do okay, how much for it. He's going to say, you know, it's three dollars. He's going to say, OK, well, charge her seven and um give me three and then you can keep the extra dollar profit as well so yeah that's what that's kind of how they do you and they'll do this in their in their native language and you want to know what they're saying um and then and you're going to be thinking they're going to help you because they're going to be my brother yes my friend yes ah uh, they're going to you know make you try to lie to you and stuff like that and make you feel like yeah they're doing you a good, a good solid but they're not um so with the language you know you got to be able to learn the language um in that country or they got to be speaking a language that you normally speak. You know, here in Egypt, you know, um, they speak Arabic. You know, Arabic is very big. It's very important here to, to know. Um, but they also speak English, and they speak English with, in, with a large amount of fluency here, which is nice. Um, but it all, it all depends on the city. Once again, like the city that I'm in, they speak English with great fluency. With great fluency. So um, that's not a, that's not a, a thing I got to worry too much about. Um, emo trucking. What up? What up? Hey, but I need everybody to smash a like button on today's video. I need everybody to smash a like button on to today's video. The more you guys like today's video, the more YouTube decides to share this video out. You know, as a YouTuber, my goal is to get as many eyeballs on the, con on the content that I produce as possible. And the best way to do that is um, by getting the algorithm to promote and push the content. All right. Now, I can only do that with your guys' help. And the best way to get um, you guys to help me out is to smash the like button. All right. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, so we yeah, understand the language. Language is very important. Um, you want to want to learn a language, you know, people try to do Duolingo, all that. That don't really work for me. I use um, YouTube videos. I just will watch a YouTube video where they're kind of breaking out language, and then I'll just try to emulate what they say in the video. That's pretty much what I normally would do, and that helped me to learn Swahili pretty well. Um, Arabic is much harder of a language to learn. I'm not going to lie to you. I try Duolingo. Duolingo helps a little bit for, like, the letters and stuff, but I feel like, I, I don't know, Arabic is pretty hard, and I don't really, I don't really have a drive to learn it to that to a greater extent, especially because they speak so much English here. Uh, but I do feel like learning a language would be helpful. Learning a language would be useful. Uh, but I basically like learned the numbers and a couple of little basic basic things, but nothing to where I, I would say I'm fluent. I, I, I knew far more Swahili than I do Arabic, um, for sure. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's one of the things. All right. So um, when you're making your plan, how to move to Africa, that's what we're talking about, how to move to Africa, how to plan your move to Africa. All right. You need to understand your research. Your research is super important. Um, so we need to research visas. We need to research the countries that we're looking at going to. And we need to research a language. Very simple. Very simple. Now, where do you do this research? Okay, that's a pretty good question. So YouTube is usually a good resource um, to start off with, you know, to get a feel of what the country is going to be like, get a feel of what if the people are speaking English. Just to get a feel of everything, you can learn a lot about, you can learn a lot about uh, the country via YouTube. Now, Egypt is one of those weird countries to where there's not very many people doing YouTube videos about it, which is kind of nice, um, you know, but when you're when you're on the outside looking in, you're like, oh, I only need some content. What is it about? Why is nobody making videos really? So, you know, um, but YouTube is a good place to start, right? Um, Tanzania has a lot of people making YouTube videos about it. There's a new YouTuber coming out of Tanzania every hour. Um, matter of fact, every 60 seconds, um, a new YouTuber coming out of Tanzania. So, you know, um, yeah, that's cool. But, you know, Gambia, Ghana, you know, all these places have a lot of YouTubers in there. So you probably want to start off watching them. They're going to give out a lot of information. Again, I'm somebody who gives out a lot of information as well, and I'm a YouTuber. I'm on YouTube. This can be considered, this can be considered research as well. If you take notes and say, okay, I need to research all these things, and then you go out and research them, it should probably help you out quite a bit. Um, so you can use YouTube to do this research. You can also use Google. So for me, nobody was telling about what's the price of apartments in Egypt, what's the price of um, uh, you know visas on Egypt, uh, in Egypt and stuff like that. So all that I had to find out basically on Google because nobody was really doing it on YouTube like that. So I went up to Google and did a little bit of research and figured, okay, this is what the average price would normally be. This is how much they pay on uh, TripAdvisor for their visa and this and that. So I got a lot of great information uh, from uh, Google as well, you know what I mean? Using like forms and things, you know? So, um, and then you can also use Reddit. You know, Reddit, they call it the front page of the internet. You know, they just have a lot of, this is a, a really big forum, you know, that you can go in and find questions, ask questions, everything like that. So I would check out Reddit as well. So YouTube, Google, and Reddit, um, you know, um, that's usually how I progress my um, plans, you know, or, or how I do my research, sorry. So first thing, how to plan your move to Africa, you need to research, okay? You need to research the country you're looking at going to. There's 54 countries, 53 countries in Africa. You need to figure out which one is right for you. How do you know which one is right for you? Well, these are the things that I look for. There may be other things that you need to look for and be mindful of. Again, I'm 22 single. Therefore, I don't have to worry about what's the school system. I don't, I don't worry about that because I'm not putting my kids in any school. I don't have kids to put in schools, right? I don't have to worry about well, what's the healthcare system. I don't have diabetes. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have any of these things. So I don't worry about doctors or hospitals. It's just, hey, I mean, it is what it is. Um, you know, so, so there's things that I don't research that you may want to research, right? But again, I'm telling you my experience, and I give you guys that um, that fair warning ahead of time, so you don't think, well, listen to everything you said, and now I'm here, and I got to take my dialysis. What am I supposed to do? You know, that wasn't on your list. Well, hey, do your research based off of what you need to research as well. But I'm telling you stuff I research to know if I want to go to that country or not. So you want to look up the visa on arrival, as well as the visa renewal options, all right? I covered that, it's, it's, in, the, it's in the beginning of the slide. You're gonna to wanna to look up the language. You wanna know, when it comes to language, you wanna know what's the main language they speak in that country. You also need to know what is, do they speak English as a secondary language? Is that like an official language of the country? Uh, if, if you're somebody who speaks English, if you speak Spanish or this and that, you wanna research that as well, all right? Um, and you wanna see like, can I speak this language? You need to ask yourself like, can I speak this language? Yes or no? Um, then you need to research the cost of living. All right, cost of living. Let's get let's get more into that, man. So um, the cost of living is something huge. You know, um, I don't understand. Some people will move to a country and not even research the cost of living. Not understand like what it's going to cost for you to live on a day to day basis. You know, not understand. You know, <clears throat> what is what you should expect to be spending on a monthly basis. You know, and that's so dangerous to me. I don't even have people do that. But you got to be smart about that. You got to be smart about understanding the cost of living. Hey, but by the way, you know, I'm giving a lot of information out on this live stream, so I would appreciate you showing uh, uh, support for the appreciation or uh, support for the information that I'm giving out by liking today's video. All right. Uh, all you need to do is like it and let's go ahead and get up to 30 likes in today's live, guys. 30 likes in today's live. You know, um, basically liking the video just lets YouTube know you're enjoying the content and YouTube decides to push it out more. As a YouTuber, my main goal is to get as many people to watch my content as possible. Um, and for you, I mean, I want to produce the best content as possible, but to produce the best content as possible, it requires money. And just like everything else in this world, money is required to produce better content. So, um, yeah, if you guys could go ahead and smash the like button and get up, get me up to 30 likes on today's live, 30 likes on today's live. 
you know, um, like I said, I'm, I'm probably one of the youngest to do it. And, and let me eat some water. Ah, you know, I'm definitely one of the youngest people to do this. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's a great way to support, you know, the youth. If I like it, if I hit the like button, it's that simple. All right, so um, cost of living. So you need to understand, yo, like, what is my apartment going to cost me on a monthly basis? You know, uh, a lot of countries uh, will have YouTubers that'll tell you. Egypt is one of those countries that don't that don't have YouTubers that'll tell you because um, there's not very many Egyptian YouTubers on here. So you know how that go. Uh, you know how, how that pro progresses. You know, as you um, try to figure it out, you want to have to go on Google for some countries. You know, if you're trying to move to Liberia. You may watch, try to watch some videos. Nobody's telling you how much things cost. You got to go to YouTube and you got to go to Google and figure it out. You know what I mean? Go on a forum, get on Reddit, get on all these different sites to try to figure out how much you're going to spend a month on rent. You know, how much are you expected to spend on Uber? You know, what's going to be your typical Uber cost and, and how far away do you plan on being? Are you plan on being in a cut? Are you plan on being very close to the city? That's going to determine a lot. Um, how much money every month do you plan on spending on groceries, food? You know, is food expensive in that country? Is food cheaper in that country? You know, um, where do people buy their food? Are people buying their food from little bodegas on the side of the road? Are people buying their food from stores, from little uh, um, um, shops? You know, like, you got to get an understanding of, of, you know, what the cost of living is going to be. Don't think because you move to Africa that everything is free. No, it's, everything's the same as it is in the States. Um, you got to pay for everything. You know, you need to understand, okay, what's going to be my electricity cost on a month-to-month -month basis? What's going to be my water cost on a month-to-month -month basis? What is going to be my uh, expense for clothing? Is clothing more is clothing cheaper? Is clothing more expensive there? You know, think about all these type of things, man. Understand the cost of living. Do your research on that. Su a super abundant amount because you know money is one of the big big things that uh, uh, hinders people's success from coming to the continent. Um, so you got to make sure you're doing your research on cost of living. Um, it's foolish to go to a new land, to a new country, and not understand about what you're going to need to be spending on a month to month basis. It's, it's it's not a good it's not a good it's not a good idea for you guys to do. Okay. Um, but that's basically step number one when, I, when it comes to making your plan to move to Africa is research. Now, the next thing you're going to have to do, you feel me, is savings. Now, people want to know um, how much should you come to Africa with and all this stuff. I never give a, a direct number because, like I said, everything is so uh, uh, played by ear. You may be somebody who refuses to live simple. You may be somebody who refuses to live simple. So how am I supposed to know what you need to to, to to uh, bring in or to save before coming here when I don't know your lifestyle. So I, I never give an answer on that. But uh, when it comes to saving, you need to save money for rent. You need to expect when you come, let me tell you how, how it is. Like, you know, um, don't don't just step out of line when, when you're coming out of the country. You know, don't just do this like on a fly by night activity. Don't watch a YouTube video and say, ah, dang it, I'm moving. I'm done. I'm leaving the States right now. Put yourself in a proper position when you decide that you want to leave, you know, um, because doing some fly by that activity when it when it when it comes to being in a foreign country is not it's not the play. Not whatsoever. All right. So, you know, put yourself in a proper position. So when it comes to savings, you know, I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of cash flow, but I also do need to tell you that you should have some form of savings now. How much money should you have saved? Well, I'm going to tell you not the amount, but I'm going to tell you what you're going to need to have money saved for. All right. So when you get to um, the country that you're going to be looking to move to, you're going to need to have money for rent already because staying in a hotel, staying in Airbnb, staying in a hostel is going to beat you over the head very hard. Um, you know, when it comes to your finances, you know, because a hotel, you're going to, you're going to be spending a hundred dollars a night. You know, and hey, I mean, hundred dollars a night. You you do that even this ten days. That's already a wrap. That's going. So you can't be making plays like that. Um, that's very inefficient. You know, um, so you need to be having money already saved for rent. So you may have your Airbnb. You may book it for a month. You may book it for twenty days. You may book it for however long. Hey, by the way, I need you guys to smash the like button on today's video. Um, I want to go ahead and get up to thirty-five likes live. Thirty-five likes on today's live. So I need at least. For more of you to smash a like button is very plain and it's very simple. It's a free way to help uh, the channel, you know, grow even more. You know, we're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. You guys know that already. Um, and, and likewise, you know, not only we're we trying to get to 20,000 subscribers, you know, we are just trying to get more people to see this content. 
you know, um, a lot of people are a lot of people are, are, are getting misguided with their with their attempts to move to Africa and then they're getting screwed, you know. Um, so I, I want I definitely do want to share this content with, with as many people as possible. Um, today I'm telling you guys how to plan your move to Africa. All right. If you're just now joining me, that's what we're talking about, how to plan your move to Africa. I talked about the first phase is research and I talked about what you need to research, where to research these type of things. Uh, right now, we're, we're moving on to step two, which is saving. People always, people always want to know, Eddie, how much did you save? Eddie, how much did you come with? Eddie, how, I have this amount. I have 1000 Should I come? Hey, Eddie, I have $10 in my account. Should I come? Hey, Eddie, uh, should, is, is 10 is 10000 enough? You know, it's just, you know, people ask the same questions all the time. So um, today, I'm just making that comprehensive guide as far as how to make your plan, how I would make my plan um, and how I do make my plan. And... You know, maybe some of these things you can take in and apply to your own self situation. But you know how that goes. You know, everybody has different situations and different demographics in which you're uh, uh, working with. But I'm um, telling you my personal experience, basic, basically. Um, so I would like to get up to 35 likes. So let's get one more of you guys to smash the like button. Let's get one more of you guys to smash the like button, you know. Um, uh, so saving, what do you need to save? Well, you need to have enough money saved for rent when you get to that land, okay? Um, you're gonna come in with an Airbnb. You're gonna come in with an Uber. You're gonna, I mean, an Airbnb. You're gonna come in with a hotel. You're gonna come in with a hostel. You're gonna come in with something of that nature. Maybe you have friends and family, but you know, for the most part, you're gonna be spending money every single night that you're in that country um, in order to be able to live somewhere. So you want to quickly, you want to end that as quickly as possible. So you want to kind of get into your, if you're not moving to a country, right? You want to get into your residence as quickly as possible. So. Um, you can stop wasting and burning money on hotels and everything like that. All right. Now, um, with that being said, that's one thing you need to, you need to have saved up for. In countries like Tanzania, you're going to be paying six months up front. Um, and so you're going to need to have six months of rent saved up front. So if you're going to expect to pay $500 a month, you're going to need to have six months of rent, you know, already stockpiled. So, you know, um, that's what, 5500 or uh, not 5500 uh, five times six is 30. So 3500 you know what I mean? It's you're going to need to have saved. So it all depends on, you know, what you plan on doing there and how you plan on living and what country you plan on going to. But you need to have money saved for rent already. All right. Now, a lot of times in these African countries, you're not going to get your house furnished. You know, I got, you know, a really good opportunity to get my apartment here furnished. I operate in the most high for that. But at the same time, not every country is going to operate in that manner and in that, and in that likeness. And thus, you need to be understanding that, yes, you're going to drop, you know, three grand, four grand, five grand on your rent. Uh, for your for your property, but you're also going to need to furnish a property as well, and you may spend another grand on furnishing properties. You know, um, so so understand that you need to have money saved for rent. You need to have money saved for furniture. You know, so just fly by that activity. Hey, I got a stimulus check for twelve hundred. I'm going to move to Africa. I mean, you may want to you may want to double back. You know, um, you know, I'm not saying that you have to double back, but you may need to rethink some things. You know, that little. <laughs> You come here with a grand and you're going to be sent packing, you know, uh, very quick. But at the same time, you know, um, somebody could come out here with a grand and make it and make it work. Somebody could come out here with $500 and make it work, you know, just because uh, of their mentality or, or because of their particular situation. They may have friends and family here that can assist them, you know. And some people are, are just uh, 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 things just work for them, you know. Some, some people are just like that where they just it just works. So, you know, uh, maybe you are that person. So I'm not going to discourage you if you are that person. You get what I'm saying? But I'm saying for the, for, for me, for the average human being, you know, um, you need to understand that these are some of the things you need to have in your pocket. You need to have your account. You need to have access to both to you. Um, so you need to have money saved. How much money do you need to have saved, Eddie? I don't have a specific number for you and your situation. I'm single, 22. So my situation, I, I may be able to live off of $100 a month, but you have 10 kids. You may need a thousand dollars a month, right? So it, it all depends on um, your particular situation. You may have diabetes, high blood pressure. You may have a, a, a glaucoma. I don't know. So you may need to get these medications and this and that, and you're going to be spending way more than I'm going to have to spend. So again, there, I can't give you a specific number, but I'm going to do my best to give you what you need to do to calculate your specific number. Okay. So rent, you need to be having money saved for rent. And again, what's going to be your rent? It depends on the country that you're going to. Um, pretty plain, pretty simple, right? Um, you also need to have money saved for furniture. Not every place is going to have a furnished place. Um, I almost, I would almost say you're probably not going to run into a place that's furnished, but hey, you never know, right? Um, then we got flights. You're going to need to make sure you have money for flights, okay? So you need to be able to pay for your flights, and after your flights, you still need to have that money saved for rent. You still need to have that money saved for furniture. 
If you are buying the price or anything like that and you're left with zero, then how do you expect to live in the country once you get there? Okay. Think about things, guys. Think about things. Um, so flights, that's the whole situation. You know, we got our money saved for that. You're gonna have to have money saved for your Airbnbs. Um, you know, Airbnbs are probably gonna be one of your biggest expenses when you're first coming into the country. Um, but as far as savings as well, don't don't forget you need to save for your visas. You know, um, your visa is gonna cost you a little bit of bread on as well. You know, you may be a little hundred beans. You know, uh, maybe fifty dollars. You know, maybe sixty dollars. You know, it all depends on. Um, yeah, I got I got that on my list as well. Nam G Cat uh, Uber. Um, I, I not, you know I'm too young to know about cab. I never really took cabs, but um, you know Uber. I definitely have that. You know, uh, on my list as well. Things you need to have saved saved up for. But we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and so you gotta understand that. Um, you need to have, you know, just a little bit of money saved, you know, to be in the head of these things and cover these things after you pay for your flights and everything like that. So, you know, Airbnb, I like it because you can pay for it ahead of time. And so that money is already out of your account. So you don't have to be worried about, okay, I got to pay this when I get there. All the stuff is already paid for. Um, but that's going to be probably your biggest expense coming into the country is wherever you're going to stay in the beginning, in the beginning portion of your uh, 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 move. So whether it's Airbnb or a hotel, I recommend Airbnbs personally or booking.com personally just because uh they on average are cheaper than hotels and simultaneously to that they are more efficient for you if you're looking to stay in a country for a long period of time you know um you may book your airbnb for a month when you first get to a country you know you may book it for two weeks when you first get into the country you know who knows um i paid 200 for a nigerian visa and, and didn't even get to use it and that's what I, that's exactly what i'm saying big king kingston on the, on the behalf of these visas are not, you know, little $10 joints. You know, these visas really will, will hit you over the head sometimes. And so you need to understand that you need to have that money saved up. And that's why I told you guys to research a visa before you uh, think about even moving to a country. Because look, look what Big King Kingston said. He paid $200 for a visa. So imagine you pay $200 for a visa and that visa lasts you for, hey, Big King Kingston, how long does a visa last? But let's say you're into the country and they give you three months. You got to renew it every three months. Um, What's that going to be? You can do that three, uh, uh, four times over the course of a year. So two times four, what's that? Eight hundred dollars in visas. So you need to have that saved up already. But again, uh, these are just things that, that I'm going to tell you that might be beneficial to you. Um, you know, if you think about them, if you don't think about them, but at the same time, I need to, I need to get up to forty likes on today's live. Let's get up to forty likes on today's live. So it lasts for three months. So look at that. So that's already that's eight hundred beans that you're going to be spending. But you know, um, and that's if they allow you to come in, come out, come in, come out. You don't know how they're going to make you play it. But I need to get up to uh, 40 likes on today's live, guys. 40 likes on today's live. Smash the like button, all right? Um, smash the like button. Liking the video is free to do. And it just lets YouTube know that you're enjoying the content so they share it out to more people. Clearly, my job as a YouTuber, or my goal as a YouTuber is to get more people to watch the content. Um, you know, hey, if I get many people every video, I'll be happy. You know, if I can make people watch every video, I'd be very happy, right? But, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and, and the benefit for you smash the like button is that, hey, uh, number one, you're supporting me, you know. Um, but number two, you know, um, it allows me to produce and incentivizes me to produce better content because I say, man, I got like people watching. I'm getting, these, I'm getting this ad revenue, you know, um, and things of that nature. So let me let me continue to put my best foot forward every day and make a better video, this and that. So, you know, um, again, if you guys do the content that I'm producing, and information that I'm giving, then you guys should want to see me produce more videos because you know I, I probably got a lot of a lot of little gems that may be helpful to you. So um, you know, definitely keep smashing like button, everything like that. Um, but you know, uh, so at least for three months, you know, tourist visa two hundred beans, you know, that's 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 a that's a big bopper over the head. But you know, at the same time, um, Uh, but at the same time, that's something you need to, th you need to think about properly and effectively and efficiently. So um, that's that. Um, so savings. So yeah, so you need to save for rent, you need to save for furniture, you need to save for flights, you need to save for Airbnbs, hotels, hostels, whatever you want to stay. And then um, Uber as well. So Uber is going to tax you quite a bit when you're first moving into a country. Uh, when you're first coming into a country, why are they going to tax you a lot? Well, because you're going to want to sightsee. You're going to want to go, okay, I'm going to this city today. Okay, I'm going to that city today. Uh, I want to go to this restaurant, that restaurant. You're going to be Ubered everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And um, you're not going to have a car. You're not going to have a motorcycle. You're not going to have anything to really transport yourself around. So you're going to be using Uber. Um, and so you're definitely going to spend a lot of money. And you won't even notice how much 
money you're spending, but it's going to be draining your account. Believe it. All right. Have some money saved for Uber. All right. Um, pretty plain, pretty basic, pretty simple. Um, network, network, network. How to plan your move to Africa. That's what we're talking about today. How to plan your move to Africa. Yo, you need to research. That's the first thing. All right. Research the country, research the visas, research the language, research the cost of living. Money is going to be important. Next thing you need to know, next thing you need to know, next thing you need to know, you need to know what do you need to have saved? What do you need to have on you in your bank account or in, in your wallet or in your bag or in on you in one way or another accessible to you? How much capital do you need? Very simple, very plain. I talked to you about the different things you will need to save for, so you plan it out accordingly, all right? Um, next thing, man, what's next? Okay, you need to get develop your network. How to plan your move to Africa. You got to develop your network, okay? So you need to get into the WhatsApp group. You need to get into the Facebook groups. You need to figure out what, what locations, what spots, what events are constantly happening in the city that you plan on residing um, that the diaspora is attending, okay? Um, the WhatsApp groups are helpful. The Facebook groups are helpful. The uh, meetups are helpful because you need to have a network because you're going to have questions. You're going to have um Situations in which you're gonna to need to contact people that that are like-minded, people that have gone through what you're going, what you're already going through, or that are going through what you're going through, to be able to effectively um, understand what your next move should be or could be, right? So, um, you know, at the end of the day, you need to just basically go ahead and figure all that out as far as your network. Um, you know, um, you know, you don't ever want to move to a country dolo or solo. It's not a smart thing to do. Uh, especially in a foreign country, you need to have people that kind of can look out for you and that you can look out for as well. Um, you know, you just it just makes sense that that's the case and that's how you operate yourself with. Um, because at the end of the day, you are you are you are need you gonna need assistance from other people from time to time. You guys know, like, let's say for me, when my dad was um, visiting, um, we uh, took a trip uh, from the city that I'm in up to uh, Cairo. And um, I have a pet. I have a dog and a cat that are that I, you know that I, I brought from the states. I brought from with me you know, from the states. And you know we're gonna have to find. We need someone to be able to watch them. We're gonna take them to like a dog center, but that only will work for the dog. It wouldn't work for the cat. And so you know uh, we ended up being able to call upon a family that you know uh, uh, also lives out here. You know um, to help us out with that. And and had I not had a network, had I not had people. That I could rely on, you know what I mean. Um, it we would have been in a situation to where we're like, okay, well, I don't know what we want, how we're gonna do this with the animals, you see. So, you know, it's just having a network is very helpful, it's very beneficial. Um, you know, maybe somebody is sick, you know, you can um, say, oh, you know, I got, I got you, I'll deliver this to you, or I can bring this to you, or I can help you do this, or whatever it is. You just need to have a, a, a network, you know, for yourself and for others as well, you know what I mean. Um, that's something to keep in mind. So. Get into the WhatsApp groups, get into the Facebook groups, get into the um, meet, know where the local meeting spots are for the, for the diaspora. You know, um, for me, I kind of already have a, a group already established kind of here. But at the same time, I'm definitely always looking to meet new people because, you know, your network is your net worth. So I'm always looking to meet new people and to um, and, uh, connect with more people and things like that. So if you do happen to be in Egypt, shoot me an email. My email is always in the description of my videos. Um, you know, my description is always, uh, my email is always in the description of my videos. It is eddie at no limit eddie.com. You know, um, maybe I don't know if everybody knows that's my email because they're like, it doesn't have Gmail, probably, it doesn't have Yahoo or whatever. So, and yeah, that is my email, eddie at no limit eddie.com. You know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, definitely feel free to email me if you are in Egypt, you know what I mean? Um, and the things that are nature, always looking to expand a network. So, um, but, but with that being said, you know, um, yeah, get your network up. You know, Egypt doesn't really have that many Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, stuff like that. You know, Tanzania had a lot more of that. Um, I feel like Egypt has a very big uh, expat community, but it's just the, the expat community is more closed off here, I guess you can say. So, uh, you know, but I do know there's a lot of um, Nigerians and a, a, lot, a lot of Kenyans over in, in Yairo. You know what I mean? Uh, so we got to explore that, um, you know, explore that area and try to meet more, you know, African-American, things like that. But everything is pretty much... Um, closed off, you know, um, out here, I would say, you know, the, the expats here are kind of just more to themselves. But um, big up to Michelle on the mission, probably one of the few YouTubers out here doing doing um, content and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's the networking part. All right. How to make your plan. Get into these groups, man. Link up with people, talk to people. It's important. Uh, very important. You know, hey, um, I need to, I, hey, I just, uh, 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 
I lost my key. Do you know the locksmiths? Yeah, I know a locksmith. Da, 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 da. So it's stuff like that that you're going to need to be able to reach out to people for. All right. So research, savings, network, last piece um, is income. All right. Income, income, income. OK, well, OK, you move into a brand new country. How do you plan on supporting yourself? How do you plan on sustaining yourself? What do you think? That is this money going to rain from the sky? You know, maybe you do think that, but that's not the that, that life that I've ever experienced, you know. Um, and so I didn't come to here with, the, with that expectation, such on and such forth. And I don't think you should either. But um, you need to have income. You need to have at least one stream of income coming in, you know, on a consistent uh, on a consistent basis. Now, you, do, you don't need to be coming to the country that you want to move to and then trying to set up. No, 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 no. Have this income set up before you leave. Like I said, that fly by night. Um, here it is. That fly by by night activity, you know, that fly by night activity is not smart, you know, it's, it's nothing that you should be doing. And maybe, you know, I speak, I don't know how I speak. So if I, when I say fly by night activity, maybe you don't, you don't know what that means. What does fly by night activity means? It means like, yo, you just low key just hopped out the blue with this, you know what I mean? Um, you know, he just, I'm just going to do it now. I, I, I saw a video, I'm going to do it. Or I, somebody says, I'm going to do it. That's what you call fly by night activity. You never want to do that. You know, in the, you know, I would say um, it, it, even in America, you don't want to do fly by night activity either. You know, if you're going to do something, you need to kind of have it planned out. You know, you need to have it a little bit of an understanding of what you're getting yourself into. You don't, you don't just want to say like, so you, your, your friend got a car, so you're going out to the dealership and you can go ahead and sign a lease for a car and you don't even know what you're signing the lease for. You don't know what your payment plans are. You don't know what your APR is. You don't know anything about it. You don't know what the, what the terms are. You can sign a lease for a car. No, that's flabbing that activity and that's going to get you in some trouble. So you need to have a proper understanding of, of what it is that you're doing. So um, you need to have at least one stream of income and you should set it up before you get to the continent, before you get to Africa. Now, once you get to Africa, it's not too late to set it up. Clearly, you can always set up the streams of income. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, let, you don't want to be on your bottom on your bottom dollar and then trying to start finding a way to make income. Why? Because energy. Uh, um, so, so basically, how I say it is, success begets success. And what does that mean? Well, when you're successful, it's so much easier to be successful. Right. So um, to become even more successful. So if you already got millions of dollars in your account and let's say there's an opportunity, you know, there's going to be an opportunity coming up where if you you know buy these houses in these cities, you know, um, eventually, you know, the, the, the values go up because there's going to be a company moving into town. Let's let's say, for example, um, you live in Texas, you're a multimillionaire, you live in Texas. Now, you know, uh, Tesla was in California. California got some wicked tax laws and Tesla announces we're going to move to uh, Tesla announced we're going to move our facility to Texas. And okay, you have to live in Texas. They say, oh, we're going to move in, into this area. If you're already a multi billionaire, you can make a play and buy up all those houses, um, knowing that people from California are making that big money. We're um, going to be moving to Texas and they're going to be looking to buy those houses and those houses are going to skyrocket in value, right? You can make that play. But if you don't have that money to make that play, then what you're going to do? You, you got to just be like, dang, I wish I could make that play, but I got to sit on the sidelines because I don't have a bread on to do so. So what I mean by that is success begets success, but also fear begets fear. So if you are on your bottom dollar and you're trying to figure out, okay, I need to do this right now, 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 you're going to you're going to attract to yourself failure, you know, and, and and it's because you're going to be so fearful. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. That you're not. It's not going to actually work because you're putting out the negative energy to it. So you know, and, and maybe some of you guys don't 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 think of this nature. I don't think uh, to this extent, and that's perfectly fine. But this, this, these are universal laws that I've come to that I come to know that I come to live by. So you know, energy begets energy. So you know, um, you want to you want to move and groove when you have the ability to move and groove. You don't want to have to move and groove, um, you know, uh, forcefully because that's going to put a little bit of a damper on how you and how you operate. So preferably. Um, set your income streams up while you're still in the states. While you still have income already coming in from your job, set it up. Set it up then when you have uh, the freedom and the peace of mind to operate efficiently and effectively. Where you don't have to depend on the money that's coming in from this business um, in the beginning. So you know that's kind of how, how I look at things. But you know, uh, to each his own. You know, if you somebody want to make that play that way, feel free to do so. Um, um, yeah, income coming in. So you need to have at least one stream. I personally recommend multiple streams because some of your income streams are going to get cut. Some of your income streams are going to stop. Some of your income streams are going to just no longer function for one reason or another. 
you know, you may come uh, here with one income stream and you're going to uh, make make uh, YouTube your one and only income stream. And next thing you know, you know, you have a problem with the channel or, you know, you can't film videos, you can't post videos, you can't edit videos, your computer crashes, you don't have a new laptop, you don't have this and that. You get logged out of your account, something happens. So you want to make sure you have multiple uh, streams of income, preferably. You know, um, you know, again, I know, I know some, people just, some people don't want to wait. You want to kind of make that play immediately. And maybe you only have time to set up one stream. Maybe you only got one stream and that's what you're going to rock with. Okay, that's fine. But, you know, when you had that one stream and it's working for you, that's good. Don't get don't get complacent. Try to get your next second stream set up and your third stream set up and your fourth stream set up. You know, um, so that way, just in case if you happen to the main one, you have something, you have some other ones uh, 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 back up. You know, uh, that's something that, that you know, um, I always recommend it. I always push people, you should try to have multiple streams of income, you know, um, and things like that. Right now, you know, I'm only Mache, she's working on a couple of different streams, you know, to where, um, you know, I have never done them myself before and she's trying them out now. And, you know, as she begins to reach success, I'm pretty sure she'll share that information with you guys as well, you know, on, on, on her channel, on Shave Vlogs channel, you know, but um, for me, you gotta, have, you gotta have at least one stream, but you should have multiple, preferably. Um, to me, cash flow income is, is the most important thing. I would I would much rather have cash flow than than a, a substantial amount of savings. That's just me personally because I know that um, eventually you're gonna run out of the money that you save. So you're gonna have to find a way to replace that money, you know. And 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 that's kind of one of the big keys to being able to stay long term is cash flow. You know, once you got the cash flow, you know, everything else kind of flows a little bit more easy because you can pay your way out of a lot of things in Africa. You can pay your way into a lot of things in Africa. Um, so, you, you know, cash flow is important. Making money on a consistent basis is important. You know, um, but I think that was I think that was a good amount of content for today's video, for today's live stream. You know, maybe some, some of you guys have asked questions. Taxes, something serious worldwide. You know, if, if you think that is, that's what you think. You know, um, you got to pay your taxes and it is what it is. Um, can you elaborate more on getting animals there, etc., for people that have pets? And if you have pets and you and and you don't love your pets, you probably shouldn't bring them to the continent. You shouldn't travel with them because it's going to be more of a headache than anything, and it's going to be very expensive. So if you're somebody working on a limited budget and you have your pets, just leave them. You know, um, for me personally, you know, like I said, uh, I love my animals, um, so I couldn't imagine um, it, it would make my life a lot harder not having them. So for me, the the added headache, the added expense, the added uh, hassle was worth it, you know. Um, but again, you know, if you're coming in with pets, it's going to be harder for you to find a place to live, you know. Keep that in mind. If you are coming in with pets, it is going to be harder for you to uh, fly to different places. It's going to cost you more money to fly to different places. You may have to reschedule flights. You may have to uh, get a flight with a longer layover. You may have to uh, get a more expensive ticket because you got to fly with this certain airline, not that airline. And so understand that the pet process is not easy. Understand that you're going to have to buy visas for your pets. Understand that you're going to have to get them this certified, that certified, this certificate, this vet, uh, this import permit, that export permit. It's going to be a, a quite a, an extensive process for you. Um, and I wouldn't recommend doing it if you're not somebody who really, if, if you're somebody who don't really care about your animals, I'll be honest with you, it's better for you not to bring them. You know, uh, but if you're somebody who you like, like that animal is part of your family, you know what I mean? You got to bring them, but understand that it is, it is going to be a challenge. You know, uh, it's not going to be a simple thing to do, you know. Um, had you considered going to Nigeria? Big up to Nigeria. You know, shout out to the Igbo people. You know, uh, I got a lot of respect for Nigeria and everything they got going on. But um, personally, I, no, I don't really consider going to Nigeria on the fact that there's a lot going on over there with the um, whole, you know, police brutality, SAR and the SARS movement. And then you have a lot of things going on over there with the Boko Haram group and, you know, things of that nature. Um, you know, but big ups to Nigeria and everything they got going on. You know, I would love to... Uh, I would love to, you know, I would, I wouldn't mind visiting Nigeria, but it's just, you know, uh, I think right now it's not the, the proper time to do so. But um, big ups to all the Nigerian people who watch the channel and you know who are here in Egypt as well, you know, and everything like that. All right, cool. So, um, I guess that's probably the last question you guys have for me. And if you guys enjoyed this live and you want to uh, show some support to the live channel overall, you guys can do that. Ooh, you guys can do that um, by hitting the cash app, which is just dropping into the chat. And we also have PayPal, which I'm going to drop into the chat as well. Um, here it is. 
Um, PayPal and Cash App, I just dropped into the chat right now. Um, you know, everybody's definitely free to, you know, support the channel via Cash App, support the channel via PayPal. Um, you can also hit the Super Chat button, which is that joint. Uh, you can also hit the Super Chat button. I might have, like, brain fog today. You can also hit that Super Chat button, which is the money sign icon in the chat. You can click on that by a Super Chat or even a Super Sticker. Uh, and that goes a long way in supporting the No Limit Eddie's channel. Um, and you also have that join button next to the subscribe button. You can click on that if you decide that's something you want to do and become a channel member. Being a channel member has a couple of perks. Um, you're gonna get exclusive emojis, you're gonna get exclusive content, you get um, you know, certain things that other people don't see, but you know, um, you also get like a, a badge next to your name and everything like that, but um, you know, I would definitely recommend you guys checking out the channel membership, checking out the Patreon. I always linked in the description of all my videos, everything like that. Um, we're going to get ready to end this live off. Let's try to end it off with 50 likes, however. So let's try to get mm, um, seven more of you guys, seven more of you guys to smash the like button so that we can go ahead and um, call it a day on this live. Let's get seven more of you guys to smash the like, all right? I want to end it off with 50 likes. Um, you know, uh, maybe you guys don't know about my day, but it was pretty basic. Uh, I got a video coming out pretty much right after I end this live stream here. Um, got a video coming out pretty much right after, right, after, right after I end this live stream here. You guys can definitely check it out if it's something that you're going to be interested in. Um, it's going to be an interesting video because I never dropped a solid video before, ever. And um, but if I can send that thumbnail to my um, computer, too. Uh, it's going to be an interesting style of video. I really want you guys to check it out. If, some, if something you're going to be interested in, you guys are going to see the thumbnail and the title of it. Um, but I need everybody to smash the like button so we can get up to 50 likes today. 50 likes today, guys. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you know, like 50 likes today, guys. 50 likes today. You know, um, I believe that we can go ahead and do that. Let's see where we're at right now. We're at 43 likes. Um, everybody smash like. Everybody smash like, all right? Um, remain travels, man. No, so it, the, 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 the title of the live really is how to how to plan your move to Africa. That's basically what the live is about, how to plan your move to Africa. However, I just made it, you know, that just, just as a little thumbnail and title sequence or combination. You know, and I ordered, some, I ordered something from Amazon. Man, they really disappointed me how long it's taking to, for the items to arrive and stuff like that. Um, so, and then, they, and then it's like, they wanted me to get Amazon Prime, a little free trial to Amazon Prime, and it's taking eight years to deliver the item. So it'd be crazy how they do that to you. But, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but right now Amazon is giving away five bucks if you stream a song on Amazon Music. So I went ahead and streamed a song on Amazon Music and got five dollars um, credit. You know, um, I was I was trying to buy where am I going? Gmail. I was trying to buy you know um, a couple of gifts and things like that, but um, basically I got two out of the three uh, purchased. But then I saw they gave it was giving that five dollars away. I said, okay, hold on, I'm gonna wait until I get this five dollars until I get the third one. So, um, you know, that five dollars came in, and so I'm basically got a place to order sometime soon. Um, because shoot, I got five dollars off, but at the same time, um, there you go, but at the same time, I need uh. I need to just go order that thing, but they, they disrespect me. But how long is other item taking to, to get a show arrive? Come on here and smash the like button, guys. Smash the like button if you're watching. If you're watching YouTube right now, if on is horizontal, turn it up and down like this vertically. X out of the chat and then smash the like. If you're watching on the computer, minimize the window and smash the like. And if you're watching on the TV, then pull out your phone, man, and smash the like button. Liking the video is free, and this and it allows you to to know that you are, you are doing this content, so they are able to share it out to more people. You know, um, you know, for me, it's, it's just it's, it's just common. It's a common thing to do when you, whenever you watch a video. Just go ahead and smash a like. You know, um, most of you guys who are watching this, it's not your first video. Might be seen me multiple times, so you already uh, kind of know what to expect when you come into a live stream or when you come into a channel or, or you come into one of my pieces of content. Um, 
uh, 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 when you come to one of the pieces of content, you pretty much already know what to expect. And so it's really just like a question us as to why not just smash like, is it that you actually, you know, have beef with yourself? Is it just that you, you know, really wish that, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know why, you know, it's, it's difficult for some people to smash your like. And they'll like sit there probably the whole live stream and not smash the like button. Oh no, I'm just gonna publish it. And that drink that drink wild to me. It really be having me baffled from time to time. All right, cool. So I just published a new video right now on the No Limit Eddie channel. Bloop. This is the link to the new video that you guys can go in and check out. You guys can go in and check out and pin it to the top. Um, To the cell. <laughs> don't sleep out here, folks. Yeah, we're gonna get to bed. I was so cold last night, I really couldn't even sleep last night. All right, guys, so the goal is to end this live stream off. I would like to get up to 50 likes before we end the live stream off. So if we can do that, I would really appreciate it. If everybody could go in and smash the like button, I would really appreciate it. Usually, um, you know, you end the live stream off and um, people will still go back and watch it. You know how that goes. Why are you so scared to go viral? Race users aren't. All right, so let's click on my um my newest video. Uh, let's click on my <laughs> my guy uh, Josh already on that joint. Um, but when you yeah yeah watch the newest video that I dropped. You know what I mean? I just dropped the video right now. Um, so definitely watch that joint. You feel me? Then you guys, 47 likes. I really appreciate that, guys. I really appreciate that. Ski. Everybody come in and smash the like, man. We're going to get, get up to 50 likes and we're going to get ready to end this live stream off. Um, you know, I have been. What I really get done today, man? I can tell you guys what I did today if I didn't already. You know, I, I think that we did. Uh, I think that we did, um, oh, that's what I did. I did a little bit of work on uh, revamping the sales page. Um, you know, I did that today for a little bit in the beginning. Um, I'm planning on filming some more ads for YouTube. We were able to get some work done on that. Um, well, it's like the script and the edit, it's the, the script and the outline, we're gonna work on that today. Um, I got one more scripting outline that I want to kind of just finalize. 
And then I plan on filming that tomorrow. Y'all willing. Um, I watch me some videos. Like I watch it all the time, you know. I watch a lot of watch dealers. Um, man, the watch the watch market is just on fire right now. Absolutely on fire right now. Um, and so I want to really start investing in watches myself. Like, I can't lie. I want to start investing in watches. And... You know, wearing them like yo, this seems like it's a real good market to be in right now. Just in a watch market, so um, yeah, that's one that you should be looking forward to on my channel soon. Hey, everybody, smash like, everybody, smash like, you know what I mean? Everybody, smash like button, guys. Um, I want to get up to 50 likes on, the, on today's live, 50 likes on today's live. So let's get three more of you guys to smash like, three more of you guys to smash like. We can be at 50 likes, um, but yes, watch is coming soon. I think I'm gonna get a Starbucks first. I like the uh, Rolex Starbucks. Uh, that's the nickname for it. It's a uh, black dial, uh, no black face screen dial. Um, and so yeah, that's something that I'm looking at uh, uh, getting. Um, but we'll see. Kind of, you know, the prices are kind of going up and things like that. Um, the prices are going up and things like that for a lot of these watches. But um, we're gonna figure out which one I, I can get into. Um, and, and, and that that will have you know room to grow, but yeah, definitely like I'm seeing a watch game. Like I, I never knew about watches like to, to that extent, but usually will usually will put you onto a lot of games. And so you know, just seeing those, you know what I mean, and, and how they're going up and things like that. I'm like, man, this is a good thing to get into. Now, for a personal watch, a watch that I could just wear, you know what I mean, for myself. I, I like the Tudors, um, which is like a Rolex sister brand. Those are much more affordable to get into, but they're not going up in value like that. Um, you know, really, really, yeah, they're not going to have a value like that. So, um, I want something that I can really make a play on, you know. <laughs> so, we're going to definitely look into like watches that go up in value and things of that nature. Um, uh, why do you call watches an investment? Yo, watches are an investment, man. Like, in reality, you put your money into a Rolex at the very least, you're going to gain, you know, a little small, a little one, two, three percent on it. But, you know, um, you're definitely, it's a better way to store your, store your money than just having it, in, having it in a bank. Um, and a lot of these watches are really going up. Like you might buy a watch, and, and the way it work, the way it's working now is the the dealers, the, the the watch dealers essentially are controlling the market. You know what I mean? They are limiting the supply purposely, and thus inflating the prices on these watches. And so they'll create a hundred pieces, drop those hundred pieces, but nobody can get access to them, right? Because they're already pre-sold. They're already pre-sold to people who already spent a million, two million, three million dollars with these people. Um, and so once those people who, who, who get the watch for retail, they'll flip it on the aftermarket for, you know, 3X, 4X, 5X that they pay for, it, you know what I mean? And, and things like that. And so the supply on these watches are very limited. Now, simultaneously to that, because the watch is so limited, people want it. You know, people want what they can't have. And so you may get a, let's say, a Rolex Daytona, right? And, you know, you may get it for, let's say you got it for 30 grand last year. Well, now, because they're even harder to get because, you know, let's say COVID shut down, shut down the factory or, you know, they're going to make less pieces or got discontinued. Whatever it is, there's multiple reasons why watch me uh, uh, be, become more valuable. Um, you you had it for 30 grand, but now nobody can get it. So now that watch is now people say, OK, you got a 30. I'll pay you 35 for it. Now some say, oh, you pay that for, I'll pay 44. I'll pay 45 for it. And it's just going up like that. And so a lot of the watches right now, Rolex, AP, Patek, they are doing mad numbers. You know what I mean? Um for, for people who who are, are who have them, you know what I mean? People are making 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand just holding a watch, you know? Um, and of course you need to be, you know, factory and needs to have, you know, you know, the box and the papers do, you know, add a good amount of value to it. Um, you know, all those bust downs and diamond here, you know, those is those take L's, you know, Cartier Santos, you're gonna take an L on that. But if you're looking at Rolex Daytona's, you're looking at that's a that's a good little joint to get in. You know, if you're looking at the sub, Rolex, Rolex and Mariners, a good little watch to get in. If you're looking at the AP Brick, you know, good little joints to get in. You know, um, of course, Richard Mills, they going up like crazy too, but that's way out of, that's 300,000, 200,000. So, I, you know, we're looking more so to Rolex, you know. Um, and, you know, the APs, APs be 70, 80 bands, you know, um, so that's a little bit out. 
So, but at the end of the day, you know, these watches really be going up in value and, and people be making some money off of them and things of that nature. And it's just a cool little thing to have too. So personal watch, I would like to get a tutor, but who cares about a personal watch? I want to be able to make money on these joints. So, you know, I'm definitely thinking about um, a Starbucks, um, maybe a Hulk. Um, Starbucks or a Hulk is kind of the ones that I'm looking at. But at the same time, I got to see what's going to happen, you know, what the prices will be when, and when I'm kind of looking at it. So, um, but yeah, on average, I think they said the watch market went up 32%. So if I, basically, let's say you had invested $1, you get $1.32 back, you know. Um, but 20, 2021 was a crazy 20, a crazy year for watches overall for some reason, you know. But um, on average, the stock market will return you 8%. The real estate market will return you 23%, I think. But so again, if you had a, if you had 100 bands and you, invest, you invested 100 grand into a watch, you would have came out with... Um, another 32 grand on top of that. You would count with 132 grand. So that's why I consider a watch an investment based off of, you know, the research that I've been seeing and things like that. So, um, yeah, and that, and that's one thing that has been getting pretty exciting, getting pretty exciting, you know what I mean? Um, uh, stuff like that. Of course, you know, um, I do want to do want to get a car as well, you know, but um, we're going to be looking at, we're definitely going to be looking at vehicles. I got a particular one that I want. I don't know. I really haven't been able to see it online here in Egypt. So I don't know, but um, that's, you know, I'm looking at a lot of different things, but I think the watches are, are is definitely going to be a goal this year in 2022. I want to get a Rolex for sure. Um, but I would like to get two more likes on this live guys. I'm about to get two more likes on today's live. Why do I want two more likes? Man, I just want to like live off of 50. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I want to live off. I want to live off of fifty likes. You know, it's, it's nothing too crazy, is it? All right. So, uh, what's up, guys? Nothing too crazy, is it? Why is this dude talking nonsense? <laughs> Talking about Forex is, is serious. You better learn it. It's been a lot of weird spam comments. It's on YouTube recently, but, um, you know, I just want to get 50 likes, guys. I just want to get 50 likes. Two more likes on this joint, man. Let's end this joint off. You know, um, if you watch it on your phone, it's horizontal. You know, flip it vertically and smash a like. If you're watching, um, the fastest way to a million dollars with Dave Ramsey. I don't like Dave Ramsey personally. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Dave Ramsey personally. But, um, Definitely looking for some new, uh, definitely looking for some content, but I'm probably about to head to bed. All right, cool. We have 49 likes. We have 49 likes. Yeah, man, let's get all the way up to um, a cold 50. You know, I know we can handle that. Oh, and I dropped the link in the chat for my newest video, too. Yeah, let me drop the link in again, man. Um, what up, I'm the King's daughter. Um, you you caught it at the tail end of the live. We literally waited for one more like before we in a live stream off. Before we in a live stream off. Um, but I just dropped a link in a, again into the chat, guys. This is this that's the newest video that I just dropped on YouTube. I literally dropped it while I was here on live. Um, it's titled "I Got a Motorcycle Big." mistake um so check that video out man check that video out you know um i don't think i've shown my motorcycle yet on any of my videos um uh, but it's in my it's in my newest video um that video was a whole lot of fun you know um 
just been practicing, learning how to dry that joint, you know, and the shifting of the gears and, you know, how to go from neutral to first and how to not stall it. And, um, you know, it's just been a process. It's, it's so much different than a driving a car, especially all the cars that I've ever owned with automatic. So, um, you know, it's something new. It's definitely something new. Hey, we got we need one more like, guys. Get one more like and let's end this live stream off. One more like. Let us like be on YouTube, you know, seeing what's going on. Watching um videos, but yeah, man. Um Glad, um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys have been enjoying the lives, enjoying the content. Uh, and we are we also 10 subscribers away from finally reaching 19.8K, so that's good news. Let's see if he likes yet. If he likes yet. Yo, one more. There we go. 50, 50 likes. Okay, cool. So we're going to end this live stream off, guys. Appreciate you guys for being, for everybody coming on here, being on here, stuff like that. Um, had pretty much brain uh, fog today, but um, I think you guys still enjoyed the content to some extent. So what we're going to go ahead and do is sign off of this live. Watch it, watch the replay if you want to, man. Uh, the main purpose of this live stream was about how to plan your move to Africa effectively. So uh, thank you guys for that. See you guys in the next one. Y'all willing? Peace.